Why? Why would you a six-year-old to run a button hook? Well, if you'd given me some pass, throw the ball so hard. Oh, wait a Way to be, buddy. There you go, huh? It's kind of tough to catch a ball with your lips, isn't it? I'm bleeding, but I'm not crying. <laughs> Let's look at it this way. We were outnumbered going in. Five of them and three of us. Dad, all you had to do was block a bunch of kids, not just stand there and tell them how corrupt their church is. <laughs> all I know is that football is a series of moves. And when I moved around Miss Emerson's right end, I really moved. She looked good. And I didn't look bad. I'm going to award myself to a cold glass of milk. Guys, didn't I tell you to pick this place up? We tried, but it was too heavy. <laughs> That's so old. Can't understand why you got so mad. Yeah, well, I just don't like being told I can't do something. And George Farmer told me that I couldn't make that four-foot putt. Yeah, and then you didn't make it. I know I didn't make it, Earl. And it was a two-foot putt. You blew a two-foot putt? Who's talking to you, huh? And why isn't this place straightened up? I mean, look at the golf clubs on the floor. What are you guys, slobs? <laughs> he will not always say what you would have him say. I should have rammed my nine iron right down George Farmer's throat. <laughs> but now and then he'll say something wonderful. Shut up, Earl. <laughs> Oh, boy, just what I wanted, a box of juice. <laughs> I don't think it was George that psyched you out, Dwight. I think it was Paul Porter's editorial in today's paper. I couldn't care less what that guy has to say. Nobody reads Paul Porter's column anyway. Well, those two guys we were playing with read it. Education in America is a flabby, whining beggar that can't save itself and can't be saved by anyone else. You know what I hate? I hate the word can't. Me too, Dwight. I can't stand it. <laughs> I'm unwilling to stand it. It's unstandable. <sighs> you know, I'm principal of a school, and I just don't want somebody telling me that I can't motivate my teachers, I can't motivate my students, I can't make a difference. You know, not that I'm taking this article very personally or anything, but... <sighs> I think it's okay to take it personally, Dwight. The whole reason he wrote the article is because of the new principal, and you are that new principal. And you're giving us bad press, Dwight. Thank you, Earl. Hey, didn't I ask you to straighten up in here? It's tied three to three. Hey, you heard your father. Well, I thought that just worked for my wife. I guess that line works for anybody. <laughs> well, I got to take off, taking the wife shopping for a new lamp. Oh, good thing tomorrow's Sunday. You'll have a day to come down. <laughs> See you Monday. All right. Oh, boy. So how much you lose? Eight bucks, plus all my dignity. Eight bucks? Mm. 
Do you know how long it takes me to save eight bucks? You smell like a foot. You should smell my feet. I can't smell your feet. When was the last time you had a shower? Get upstairs right now. Get cleaned up. No, don't do it, Charlie. No, I'm telling you. It's just starting to work. We've got Dad right where we want him now. I can't take him anymore. I woke up this morning and my face stuck to my pillow. <laughs> You're not that dirty. Really. And besides, Dad's already starting to worry about you. Really? Yeah. It's gonna be torture now, but down the road it'll be great. See, the whole idea of you not showering is to create a diversion. If you pull this off, Dad'll be completely on your case. I mean, he'll be so worried about you that I'll have total freedom. To do what? I don't know. This is just a test. <laughs> but if it works for me, it'll work for you when you get older. Ben can be your diversion. Can we just play basketball? I'm trying to teach you how to control Dad. I never had an older brother to teach me that. What if I just change my underwear? Dad'll never know. He'll still think I'm not showering. But you'll know. It'll weaken your resolve. This experiment's taking too long. It's because you're too young. If you had hormones, you'd really stink. Where can I get some hormones? Let me talk to Rigo. He can get anything. I tell you, Dwight, that has to be the longest sandwich in the world. You know, it's like that long putt that you missed this morning. <laughs> Dad, how come none of the guys in your outfit ever tried to shoot you? You know, uh, I've got a date with uh, Liz Emerson tonight. Oh. And uh, yeah. I, uh, I'm i looking forward to seeing her. And uh, I tell you, the thing is, if I can just get by those dog slides that she shows. And she has no projector, do you understand? She just goes like this all the time. Look, here, here, see? That's it. Look, look at this. What is it? Look at that. See, he's growling, he's growling. Look, look he's barking. Look at what he's doing. Yeah, what is he doing? <laughs> But listen, the one thing is, one of her dogs, and I mean it's a big dog, the only dog she's got, really. She's got a lot of slides, but she's got one big dog, and he is really gamey. I mean, he's strong. He's stout. You understand? Yeah. Now, I guess what I'm trying to say is that, well, your son is getting kind of stout. Charlie? He's, yeah. He should shower more. And it's up to you to lay the law down. You understand? Yeah. I mean that. You got to lay the law down on these kids. Like you used to do to me? Yeah. yeah. Make a fool of yourself? Yeah. Lose the sideburns, Dwight. What are you? Some kind of an agitator? Huh? <laughs> Come on. Well, I thought at the time, and I still think that you were kind of a lefto pinko prevert. <laughs> I know why I wore sideburns. Because you told me that I couldn't wear them. Now, I could make Charlie shower, but then he would be clean by force, and I don't believe in force. I, I think you can enlighten him. Well, I just happen to believe in force. Force does wonders. And then, of course, after using a lot of force, you automatically enlighten the guy. <laughs> Dad, mm. you smell lovely. <laughs> and you look beautiful. Got a date with Liz Emerson. Back at the taco though the other day over at the park. Yeah, yeah, I was there. It was a clean hit. <laughs> I'm thinking of taking Liz Emerson over to that historic marker over on 180. That lady, you can say what you want about her. She loves history. Yep. Dated all those guys in that picture. <laughs> Did it on Okinawa. I don't know why. I'm... All right, man. Starboard side. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Loved it, man. Did a heck of a job. <laughs> All right, boys. Let's go. Take a look at the magazines across the street. Right? Jerry, uh, I hear that Mrs. Gittleson's renting a room out at her house. 
Where do you ladies get this stuff? <laughs> this place is the hub of Pomahack. Nothing goes on that we don't hear about. Well, maybe one day you guys will branch off into haircutting. <laughs> That's exactly what Paul Porter said. <clears throat> Paul Porter? Uh, Paul Porter what? Nothing. You, you said Paul Porter. Oh, he means the Paul Porter who wrote that scathing article. Uh, all right, you guys, cut it out. It's okay by us. He didn't smear our names in the article. Look, I'm not going to get into it, because that article was poorly researched, poorly written, and that business about the lowest test scores in history, that was just an out-and-out -out lie, okay? I mean, it's a joke. Illiterate kids doesn't sound like a joke to me. You know what, Leo? You're right. It's not a joke. I mean, this guy, he, he attacks me, he attacks my students, my teachers. I mean, uh, according to him, if you looked into any one of my classrooms, there's an episode of Geraldo. I mean, my school is not full of illiterate products from broken homes staring blankly into a hopeless future. But I should just tell Paul Porter that, huh? That's what we thought, too. He'll be in today for heaven. He will? Four o'clock. You guys are a couple of troublemakers, you know that? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs>
Yeah, they read where you call them lazy and unmotivated and where you told them that they can't learn. Hey, well, I wasn't referring specifically to these children. Oh, yes, you were. These are exactly the people to whom you referred. Yeah, uh, there's Evie and Jody and Tommy and, and, and Billy. Yeah, go ahead. Tell them to their faces, huh? Tell them what you think about their future. Tell them, here, tell this face right here. Huh? Go ahead, tell this face. I don't have to do anything of the kind. So you take it back? No. I won't take it back. Excuse me. Mr. Porter, prepare to die. <laughs> and furthermore, Your Honor, I intend to prove, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that this sick puppy conspired, <laughs> conjoled, coerced, and otherwise manipulated his precious younger brother to not shower or bathe for two very disgusting weeks. Tell me something, how long is this gonna last? Not long, Your Honor, not long. Bailiff, bring forth the evidence. Don't use the barbecue fork. Haven't you ever been to a court martial before? I didn't want to get fingerprints on him. Oh. Your Honor, I submit exhibit A. Yes, those are my socks. They're filthy. They can be washed, Grandpa. Objection! No, they cannot be washed. I now call to the stand the laundry expert. It's unlikely that these socks can be saved. Many of the ingredients used will stain. And the exposure to sunlight and moisture, both in the yard and on my feet, have caused permanent damage. Thank you, Doctor. You may step up. You got nothing connecting me to those socks. You can't prove a thing. Oh, yeah? Well, it just so happens that I have a secret witness. I now call to the stand, Rigo. Oh! Rigo's no witness. He's an accomplice. He brought the cheese. I brought the egg, too. See? What are you going to do to Rigo? Nothing. Rigo's made a deal. He's turned state's evidence. Besides, he's not my kid. Sit down, Rigo, and tell us everything you know. He did it! He did it! <laughs> well, Your Honor, it looks pretty cut and dried to me. I recommend that the defendant be ordered to wear said socks around his neck until such time that he realizes what a stupid thing he has done. What saith ye? Don't ever call me ye. <laughs> Incidentally, your performance, Rigo, excellent. I love the crying scene. You would get off for that in my courtroom. I love the way you cried. It was very emotional, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Look at you. Kind of Steve Stunning, right? All right. You ought to be able to do some tackling in that outfit. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm going to see Miss Emerson tonight, Liz, and uh, have a little fun and kind of roll around on the floor, you know, and poke the fire. And <laughs> <laughs> kind of just, you know, just be an old devil. <laughs> uh, I've often said, you know, Dwight, that God is in my mind and the devil's in my pants. <laughs> Listen, uh, inc incidentally, incidentally, uh, yeah. If, if your mom calls, tell her that, um, tell her I've come down with fever, maybe uh, dengue fever, I've got uh, yellow fever. And tell her this, tell her this, because they usually put up a sign. Maybe the kids could do this. Smallpox. Dad, Dad you don't have to lie to her. You've, you've been divorced for 12 years. No, but you have to lie to her. <laughs> I'm telling you when she calls, because I do not want to go through that interrogation that woman does. I mean, she has twisted my arms all the way around and put 16 flashlights in front of my... Tell me where you are. <laughs> it's one of the many reasons I loved your mom, but I had to divorce her. She ground set screws into my feet. Well, you have a good time tonight. I intend to. <laughs> Oh.
Ой. You're up early. Boy, I tell you something, Dwight. That Liz Emerson makes more noise in the morning than a garbage truck. <laughs> At least you didn't have to chew your arm off to get out of there. Hey, let me ask you something. Uh, did your mom call? Yeah, yeah, she called. Oh, yeah. what did she say? What did she say? Well, I had to tell her the truth. Why did you have to tell her the truth? I told you to lie to her. Tell her that I had smallpox. What did you tell her? Well, it didn't hurt her. You know, she, uh, she laughed. She laughed. She laughed a lot. Yeah, she, uh... <laughs> <laughs> she, thought, she thought it was great. She was uh, calling from this Brigadier General's car phone. I couldn't really understand her. They were on their way to some party somewhere. The music was real loud. I don't know. They looked like they were having a good time. They sounded like it. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> right. Absence does make the heart grow fonder. You know, Meg is still one heck of a great lady. I love her. She's your mom. Is that not moving? Huh? Not from you. <laughs>